The National Secretary of the Troubled Health Services Union, Cathy Jackson, says she'll fight moves to force her out of that organisation. The union's acting national president, Chris Brown, says she's guilty of gross misconduct and has filed internal charges. Cathy Jackson is the National Secretary of the Health Services Union. She joins us now in the studio. Good morning. Thanks for being Good here. Good morning. Uh, there are 10 charges that have been levelled against you and it's as your time as the National Secretary of the National Union. Uh, what do you understand these charges are relating to? These charges are totally politically motivated by Chris Brown and the rest of the National Executive. We had them last week coming out in the press calling for my resignation and here they are today laying charges against me. These are This is nothing new. This is all about making sure that the ALP remain, um, regains control or retains control of that union and Chris Brown, is, Chris Brown is just being a political player in that. I totally reject his allegations and I totally reject um, the, mo the mode that he's gone about this. Rather than co joining me um, in cleaning up this union, he's done everything in his power to stop it. And more importantly, when I called for a judicial inquiry at the National Executive, Chris Brown on both occasions rejected that call. I think it's about time that the HSU had a judicial inquiry. The Fair Work Australia report has totally failed and flawed. Um, and uh, he's done nothing about that. He just thinks that it's all going to go away if they just get Cathy Jackson. This is all about getting Cathy Jackson. And as I've said previously, this is not about me. This is not about me taking over Michael Williamson's job, Chris Brown's job or anything like that. This is about cleaning up this union for its membership. OK, here's your chance to answer some of those claims. Uh, you allegedly hired a friend, Rob Elliott, without union approval. This is according to the union. Did you do that? I, I totally reject that. Rob Elliott was employed by the HSU East Branch. The National Office has never paid any money to Rob Elliott. Did you Elliott. have anything to do with his hiring? Yes, I did. Is he your friend? He's a colleague that I've worked with. He was a former National Secretary. I've got lots of friends in the union movement and, and people that I work with. Okay, and you're, you're convinced you've done nothing wrong based totally. on him being a colleague of yours? He was a colleague of mine that had a contract with the, pre, with the number three branch. Once we amalgamated, that contract continued. The National Office has never paid one cent of members' money to Rob Elliott. The HSU East branch has, and we have nothing to hide there. But for, for, for Chris Brown to say that I've breached the union's rules by employing Rob Elliott in the HSU East branch is totally ridiculous. It just shows his bad faith. Because the allegation is that you entered into these contractual arrangements exposing the union to thousands of dollars in liability without the approval of the National Executive. Well, I totally reject that. And another charge is that I got legal advice read the um, Fair Work Australia report. Yes, I went out to get read legal advice, as I should be able to get independent legal advice from the solicitors of my choice. I was not prepared to use my... Um, Slater and Gordon, because they are conflicted, because they do act for Michael Williamson and have acted for Michael Williamson, and Chris Brown. Chris Brown has no credibility in this issue. If you look at Craig Thompson's maiden speech, the people he thanked in that speech were Chris Brown, Lloyd Williams, Dan Hill, all the members of the Finance Committee that allowed the dysfunction of this union and Craig Thompson to rip off members' money happened under their watch. They were the Finance Committee. That legal advice was worth $40,000 according to the union. Should you have got union approval for that? I believed that I had got union approval. I told the um, National Executive that I had charges laid against me or fa findings made against me by Fair Work Australia, that I was going to go out and get legal advice as a National Secretary, that I was not prepared to use Slater and Gordon because they're totally conflicted, and I went to an independent law firm. Chris Brown, what Chris Brown doesn't tell you is... I just is want to step back if you said you're told, I mean, $40,000, I assume there are signatures and forms to fill out. Did you get formal approval from the union to spend that money on your legal defence? Well, I didn't know how much it was going to cost at the time. What I told the National Should Executive... Should you have tested that oh, out? We're, we're, talking, we're talking your members' funds here. Oh, in the benefit... There are 60,000 members of the Health Services Union watching this and wondering what the hell is going on. Yes, but what Chris Brown doesn't tell you is that he has spent over $270,000 fighting my moves in the federal court, did he get approval for that? Has he gone out and told the members that he has spent $270,000 plus on a, on a case that the minister was running for him? So this is just another example of Chris Brown being politically motivated and doing the bidding of the ALP and Sussex Street rather than looking after the best interests of the membership. He says it's not politically motivated and that the timing is irrelevant when it comes to the <laughs> national elections because it, uh, the union elections, because this matter should be resolved in the next fortnight. Well, Chris Brown is um, 
in some sort of fairyland if he believes that anyone's going to believe that. These charges and these allegations, Rob Elliott has had a contract for this union, with this union for over three years or even longer. And for him to wait until now, when nominations are about to open, is nothing more than him trying to smear me in the forthcoming elections. So what does the future hold for you? You've got to go through this investigation process in the next fortnight. What happens if these charges are found to be valid? Well, I've... Oh, look, these charges are not going to be found to be valid. This is about Chris Brown smearing me in the press with the rest of the national executive. Keep in mind that um, probably this time last week they were calling for my resignation. I don't give them my resignation and then they come up with these trumped up charges. Will you recontest your position? Well, at this point I've not decided. Uh, my inclination is not to, but that's not because of what Chris Brown is doing or anything else is doing. This is about making sure and proving to the membership that I did not take this action because I wanted to take over this union. I took the action that I took against Craig Thompson and Michael Williamson because that was real corruption. And if you look at the Tempe report, in the Tempe report, in Chapter 10 of the Tempe report, Mr Tempe talks about that there were people in that organisation, the New South Wales councillors, who were doing Michael Williamson's bidding. They're, they're the words that came out of the Tempe report. Those people are people like um, Jared Hayes is running for election, Bob Hull, all of them Williamson supporters and they're trying to now to try now to make out that they had nothing to do with Williamson and that Kathy Jackson has caused all their problems. The problems that I have caused in this organisation, if, if you want to call it that, is to expose corruption. And if there's any factional players in this um, sorry saga, it's the anti-corruption faction versus the corrupt faction and people that, like as we speak now, We've got the Sussex Street in New South Wales, the New South Wales Labor right and the New South Wales ALP running a call, a call centre for Jared Hayes. Has that been approved by the ALP and the membership? Can you understand why, again, those 60,000 hard-working, often low-paid members of your union are watching this? You use the word fairyland. We had uh, uh, Craig Thompson on this program last week denying until he was blue in the face that it was his credit card receipts on, on the broth in, the, in the brothel's books. We have you making those claims against uh, the na acting national president. We have you telling us this morning that you went off and spent union money on legal fees without knowing how much money was going to be involved here. You're all tarred with one brush here, really. Uh, uh, that is how a lot of your members would see this. Well, well, they may see it that way, and I can... Uh, you can understand why they see it that way. I can understand why they, they're concerned. But more importantly, in the last two national executives, I've called for a judicial inquiry. Chris Brown has rejected my calls for a judicial, judicial inquiry. There are many lot, um, unanswered questions out there. The Fair Work Australia report was a total debacle. I said that from the beginning. And for Craig Thompson to come out last week to make out that he was totally exonerated was totally ludicrous, totally ludicrous. They, they made no such findings that, you know, his, the, that the report was flawed about him. It was about the process that was undertaken. Chris Brown is not contesting the next election. Surely, going on Michael's point, if you stepped aside, it would give the union a chance to start again and start with a clean slate. Well, that's assuming that my, um, Chris Brown brings in a clean point of view, which he does not. Chris Brown, the acting national president, was not prepared to allow the members to have a vote about who replaces, um, who, who fills that position in the future. Chris Brown has put a system in place where he's going to become the next president of the HSU without an election. This is my issue. And how do you restore faith with your 60,000 members? After all of this, regardless who gets in, who doesn't mm -hmm. recontest, what do you do to restore faith? What we do to restore faith is to show good faith to our membership. The national executives have got to um, pull together and act as one and it's not doing that at the moment. We've got the anti um, Kathy Jackson forces, which is all of them. And if you read Craig Thompson's parliamentary um, maiden speech, who does he thank in that speech? He doesn't thank me. He thanks Chris Brown, Lloyd Williams, Dan Hill, the members of the Finance Committee that allowed this debacle to happen. They were on the Finance Committee. I wasn't. They were on the Finance Committee. What did they do? When I called for Michael Williamson's resignations, resignation months ago, at no point did Chris Brown support me in that action. Chris Brown is there doing the bidding of the ALP and making sure that he gets a name for himself as a reformer when he, in fact he's a, he's a hypocrite. He's a total hypocrite. I went to Chris Brown to seek his assistance about this and his, 
His view was in April of this year or March of this year, this has got nothing to do with him, it's an internal problem and I should just deal with it internally. Okay, Cathy Jackson, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks for your time this That's morning. All right.